solvency ratios problem 3. Mellon Inc. provides the following income statement for 20x9. Net sales $240,000, cost of goods sold $110,000, gross profit $130,000, operating expenses, selling expenses $45,000, administrative expenses $12,000, total operating expenses $57,000, operating income $73,000. Other income and expenses, loss on sale of capital assets $28,000, interest expense $1,000, total other income and expenses $29,000, income before income taxes $44,000, income tax expense $5,200, net income $38,800. Calculate the times interest earned ratio. We're focusing on the times interest earned ratio. This ratio is a little more involved than other ratios. It's part of the solvency analysis. The solvency analysis evaluates a company's ability to pay its long-term debts. And there's really three major types of ratios or calculations you do in the solvency analysis. There's the ratio of fixed assets to long-term liabilities, the ratio of liabilities to uh, stockholders equity or the debt to equity ratio. And then there's the number of times interest charges earned, which is what we have here. Times interest earned ratio, si same idea, same thing. So this calculation is income before income tax. So before you subtract away income tax, so income before income tax plus interest expense. And this can be described other ways known as EBIT or EBITDA. I, I like to refer to it here, income before income tax plus interest expense. And if you're given net income, like we're given this problem, you can see that we can back into this by adding in certain things. So I'll show you how to do that. And over, the amount is all over the interest expense. It's all over the amount of interest expense. So that is the calculation. And the numerator is where, why this, this specific ratio can be challenging. And we'll get to that in a moment, looking at our income statement for 20x9. I want to explain what it is. So this times interest earned ratio, also known as the coverage ratio, it measures the risk that interest payments will not be made if earnings decrease. So again, this is a ratio that a lot of lenders look at because if they're lending, they want to get their interest payments. So the higher the ratio, the more likely interest payments will be paid if earnings decrease, if they decrease. So the higher, the better in terms of look, a creditor looking at this. So that's, that's a lot better because that shows you um, in terms of what the other uh, interest expense amounts are out there so you can be covered in terms of your interest expense. Because the idea is that if you're a lender and there's a business that's already been um, receiving lending, receiving has creditors, you have to take into account the effect of them as well. The real issue here is that numerator, as I mentioned earlier, because if you look at what we have our income tax or our income tax income statement, because it can be presented in such a, a such weird ways. Now, fortunately, here we have income before income taxes forty four thousand dollars. We can go ahead and we can put that in there as the first item. So the income before income tax that says forty four thousand dollars. We got that right there. Boom. So that made it a lot simpler. Plus, the interest expense we're told is one thousand dollars. That's just right here. So plus $1,000, and we put that all over the $1,000, the same $1,000, the same $1,000. And the idea here is we're going to take, the calculation is going to be $45,000 when you add, when you sum the two numbers, over $1,000, and that's going to equal 45.00 times. So again, this is showing the risk that interest payments will not be made if earnings decrease. And the higher the ratio, which this one is high, 45 times, the higher the ratio, the more likely interest payments will be paid if earnings decrease. So if earnings did go down, still could be covered because the other interest expense are just so low. Now, one thing to consider, if I didn't give you the income before income taxes, let's just say I gave you net income of $38,800. You could add the income tax expense to get the 44,000. So sometimes in certain classes, you might not be given the line income before income tax. So you might have to calculate that. You might have to put 38,800 net income. So you might have to just do net income plus income tax expense to get this number. And that is how you would calculate that. You will be, you should be given the interest expense. That should be given to you. But this income before income taxes, because income taxes is one of the last items to be subtracted away, take net income plus income tax expense to get that item. 
to get that calculation. Here, we have it. We have the 44,000 income before income taxes. But if I just gave you net income and told you income tax expense, you could add those two numbers together. You've got your interest expense, 1,000. Boom, really working with it. So that's what this is all about. That's what this calculation is. Again, part of the solvency analysis. Again, it's it's used to measure the risk that interest payments will not be made if earnings decrease. So very important from creditor standpoint. And the higher the ratio, which here it's 45 times, which is very high. Again, it also depends on the business and whatnot. But the higher the ratio, the more likely interest payments will be paid if earnings decrease. And the higher it is, the better it is for a lender looking at the business to lend money.